Hello and welcome back to the Film School Chronicle. Today it is just Carmelo and Bryce. No, it's not true. This is actually an intro we're doing for an episode with uh, Andy Neal, a Australian screen producer. But that's not the important part. This is a little bit of a welcome back for Carmelo. So how about you say hi, Carmelo? Hi, everyone. Um, whether or not you're pleased to see me and hear me, I'm back nonetheless. So yes, I've uh, been on a little bit of a hiatus uh, break at the end of what was a very busy semester. Uh, so, yes, I'm very happy to be back, and uh, thanks for having me back, Bryce. Oh, of course, yeah. You're the co-host of the show. But, yeah, uh, without further ado, I guess we're going to jump into our next interview. And also, I did that little bit of an intro for the other episode that we did, uh, the, the live on live on set of New Farm Cinema. It's not a set, but whatever. Um, we're going back to our normal interviews, and this is going to be a normal interview. Next week's going to be a normal interview as well. So, uh, enjoy the show, and look forward to things we have coming up in the future. We're very excited for some plans we've got. But, anyways, thank you, and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Film School Chronicle. Today we are joined by Andy Nell and Carmelo, my co-host, is back this week. So let's jump into it. Andy Nell, you are a screen producer and also a lecturer here, a lecturer here at Griffith University. Could you go, and, uh, go ahead and give yourself an, an introduction for us? Sorry for the awful, awful intro. Let's jump into it. Uh, yeah, well, I guess, yeah, I've worked in the, the screen industry for probably four decades now from my first forays into it. Mm -hmm. If you're after a quick history of my um, career, yes, yes please. Uh, I guess I was really lucky that uh, in high school, uh, back in the uh, early '70s, because I'm that old, <laughs> uh, we had an inspired English teacher who got a Super 8 camera, and I think I started making some Super 8 films in in class in high school. I went to uni. Uh, they had a, a film group at uni um, at UNSW then where I made some 16 mil short films. I got myself a job as a part-time uh, camera operator and production assistant in the uni audiovisual unit uh, and then uh, graduated from uni, got a job as, as a, a radio announcer uh, in Brisbane, uh, went to Sydney, worked at worked as a, a current affairs reporter at Triple J, was in the right place at the right time to then start uh, working on a television show called Beatbox with ABC TV in the mid-1980s, which was a you know, fantastic music and box pop show. Mm -hmm. And then uh, worked on another television show that I pitched and developed, which was called Blah Blah Blah, which was the show that launched Andrew Denton's career. And... Uh, then became manager at Triple J for about four years, then went back to TV and worked on uh, a stack of different TV shows uh, over about three decades or so, uh, including ones with Andrew Denton at Channel 7 and uh, documentaries like Long Way to the Top on the ABC about the history of Australian rock and roll, made other documentaries for SBS and also... Uh, for about 10 or 12 years, was the series producer of, of The Chasers show from CNN and N in 2003 through to the uh, kind of final hamster wheel in about 2013. Made documentary series for the ABC called Shock Horror Auntie on the ABC's most controversial moments. Worked on other stuff like Filthy Rich and Homeless for SBS and... Um, you know, one of my favourite shows in there was one called Hungry Beast, which was another one that um, I worked on, developed with Andrew Denton, which was on in about 2009, 10, 11, um, with a bunch of young people uh, who we recruited specifically for the show. That was um, a lot of fun. In that time, I also taught, uh, was head of television at AFTRS, while would take leave, leave without pay from afters to go and produce chaser shows. Uh, so I've had a long time in the TV industry, so there's a yeah. quick, yeah. quick summary. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's quite it's a storied career. Oh, and definitely. A lot of stuff, like Camille and I had a look at your IMDb page before we came in, and just so many other things. I didn't know you were a manager of Triple J. That's crazy. I'm like a huge Triple J fan, so that's very interesting to hear. Yeah. How, how was that? Uh, oh, that was pretty wild, because yeah. I was involved in taking it national. Right. And, uh, and this is back in the 1980s? This, this is back at the end of the 80s. We right. had... Uh, basically, Triple J had to go national on the same budget as a Sydney station. Right. Um, so we got, right. no, we got no increase in funding. Yeah. Um, so there was there was a lot of work of bringing, getting resources out of the other bits of the ABC, convincing them to to go on, and taking Triple J through a big change. Yeah. Not not all the staff were happy about that. Mm, um, yeah, I But yeah, uh, so one thing I guess is missing from there is you're now a tutor at uh, Griffith University, and you're tutoring a lot of the. Uh, TV-related uh, electives and classes that, that go on here. 
How has that transition been from your career in the screen industry to uh, Griffith Uni? And also, what are you still working on while you're here? Uh, I guess, well, it's something that I'd been, while I was doing stuff out in the TV industry, I was often going and doing guest lectures at, at UTS in Sydney and at Newcastle Uni mm-hmm. and, um, you know, Monash Uni in Melbourne and, and Sydney Uni. So I'd done guest lectures at lots of universities and then in the, from basically, you know, 99 to 2005, I was, you know, lecturing at um, and run, running the television department at AFTRS. So I was already in academia and then I guess either since then, some of the time I'd go and do teach television journalism, be a lecturer in television journalism at, at UTS. And then the last three years before uh, I came to Griffith, I was a sessional lecturer at UTS, um, teaching subjects there. And then uh, I basically um, applied for the job as, uh, you know, was senior lecturer of television and online at, at Griffith Film School, yep. and they decided to employ me. So. Right, fantastic. I'm oh, very nice. Uh, so, Andy, um, you've had, a, you know, obviously a very um, awesome, just yeah, um, career. Sorry, it's my first week back, <laughs> uh, and I'm stumbling <laughs> on the recording. Um, but yeah, no, you've had an incredible career. Uh, but that's been predominantly. TV, uh, and you, you know, sort of made your, your start in the industry in a time when, you know, Australian film was really starting to pick up uh, with the likes of, you know, like uh, George Miller's stuff and, and uh, Crocodile Dundee and all of that. So I think my question is, um, what is it about TV in particular that you love and why did you decide to go down that path? Uh, oh, well, I guess I'd, you know, tried going down, you know, multiple paths. I, you know, made short films um, and... I guess that was where uh, where work was. Also, uh, one of there's a couple of really exciting things about TV. This mask keeps slipping down <laughs> yeah. as I talk. And, um, one of the one of the the big exciting things about TV is that it's a really collaborative thing. And like all filmmaking is is a collaborative thing. And but I think television shows often end up being. Uh, I guess it's it's a more team focused thing. Like on a, a feature film or a, a short film, you you basically you know got a director laying down the law and you know going for their vision or, or whatever. And there's a lot more. Uh, I think it it can be a, a lot more collaborative um, thing ha- happening there. And it's people work their asses off in TV making TV shows, and they get a lot out of it. And a big part of that is is the team collaboration thing. The other thing that's um, that's great about TV is that um, you get uh, the opportunity to uh, reach a lot of people. Like, say, when I was doing uh, working on the Chasers War on everything, you know, with that show, two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, two thousand and seven, we, you know, were basically the number, ABC's number one rating show. We won the slot um, every night. We rated, you know, about between 1.3 and 1.6 million people would watch the show on a Wednesday night. When we had our APEC episode, something like, you know, 2.4 million people watched the show. So one of the, if you think about, um, you know, any Australian feature film, uh, you know, apart from Crocodile Dundee yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or whatever, um, not many probably got, not many more, went, not more than 2.4 million people went and saw... Uh, a, a, celebrated Australian feature film yep. in the cinema like so we we're hitting we we're hitting you know 1.4 million people every week yep. so if you're about communicating ideas and talking to people um, then TV is fantastic for that yep. um, and if you're another great thing about it is it gives you instant feedback because you get uh, one you get the ratings of yep. how many people watched it but you also have people uh, you know, writing in, ringing in, and in the days that once social media started, once Twitter started, which we'd always, you know, all the shows I was on were right at the forefront of using social media, you get instant feedback from your audience. So it's a fantastic thing. Yeah, yeah it's interesting to hear um, about that because I know a lot of film students go to uni specifically to make feature films or to make short films and, and narrative kind of content. But it's interesting to hear that they might be able to reach people easier if they did lean more into TV and making TV productions and going that direction. Well, well, again, it, it depends what it depends what you want to do. It's true. Like you know, like I had feature films. I 
like on another student project while I was at, uh, I also was a film student while I was working at Triple J as a current affairs reporter. I was mm-hmm. also doing film at, at UTS, doing, uh, you know, UTS is equivalent of GFS um, and shooting short films on 16 mil still in those days, cutting them on steam backs. Yeah. You know, great fun. Uh, and I worked, you know, I basically, you know, directed another student's, um, you know, capstone project grad slate project and we basically did a feature film that we shot in 10 days um (laughs) on zero budget yeah yeah Um, but that uh, sounds familiar (laughs) (laughs) but uh this was uh you know so i guess to me it's it's all it's not just tv or film it's all it's all storytelling it's what i guess what message you want to do Mm. like for me a big driving thing uh that i'd always been about is having a the, the story I wanted to tell was whatever it was, overall you could sort of, okay, let's make the world a better place. And and so there's an, an underlying, um, that's a driver for me as far as all the, the kind of TV shows I worked mm-hmm. on or film things I worked on were, were all about that. So uh, it depends what you want to do as far as when you, as what you do, choose TV or film, <laughs> yeah, which, whichever. Yeah. But, but I, one of the things I think, if if you you know you want to make a feature film, go ahead and make your feature film. If that's what your passion is and that's what you want to do, but along the way, don't necessarily rule out working with um, working in um, television because if you've got to have uh, a a day job while you're doing sitting in your garret writing your feature film or or trying to get the funding for it, yeah. it's it can take a while. You look at an Australian movie like Shine. Uh, wins the Oscar, it took them 10 years to get the funding to make that. Yeah. Yeah. So in the meantime, uh, you could be working in McDonald's or in a bottle shop to <laughs> pay the rent, or if you can get a job working on a television production, you're still going to be working in the industry and you're going to be actually learning skills that you can, you can bring to that. I feel like Andy might be directing that one at me. No, that's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I'm a bit famously uh, not the biggest fan of TV studios. Stuff. See, whereas I'm already, like, starting to develop that sort of mindset, like, that that was instilled in me in first year. You know, they said, as far as, you know, a filmmaker's bread and butter whilst trying to make their passion projects is, you know, you do advertising in corporate or you do TV. And, yeah. you know, last year's TV electives and stuff like that were very, very interesting to me. Um, yeah. So I just, I had a question. I wanted to go further into, you know, your sort of uh, decision making process and uh, you, what sort of, you know, drives you in your, your pitching process and, and what you desire to make um, it, with, with, t- with, with regards to TV. Sorry, I had notes that I brought in in advance for this. Um, so basically, yeah, so you've, you've got a career that's full of, of these TV shows that are, you know, comedies on the surface, but you have this, you know, these really serious um, undertones and these really important underlying messages. So I guess... What is your decision-making process when it comes to pitching a project like that? Uh, well, well, first of all, I'd say some of the some of the stuff I've done is, is comedies, but some yeah. of, I've also made you know serious documentaries course, on yeah. indigenous country music and or the 1996 federal election and or done current affairs shows like a show like Hungry Beast had a lot of comedy elements in it, but it also was really serious current affairs shows. Yeah, and uh, it won. Uh, you know, one about the young reporters we recruited, Hungry Beast, you know, Monique Shafter won a Walkley for her story that she did. So a whole lot of stuff on a mix of comedy yeah, yeah. and really serious shit as well. <laughs> and usually the comedy has deals with serious shit. Of course, yeah, like the political um, satire and yeah. that sort of thing. Um, but as far as, I guess, you know, pitching show, I'm not sure what you're asking in the question as far as, like, as far as the kind of show you mean, whether you mean the shows I choose to work on and pitch, or do you mean do you want to talk about the, the actual process of pitching it or the approach? I'd like to hear it. the process of pitching. I first. would like to hear about how you what you choose to you know <laughs> be involved in. Yeah. Uh, so both, well, I guess. I guess what I, what I choose to be involved in, and sometimes it's it's ideas that I've come up with a generator, or sometimes other people approach me and go, "Hey, Andy, this." You know, do you want to work on this? Oh, yeah, that sounds exciting. Um, and if it's something that I believe in, so the number one thing is, you know, how much do I believe in this project? How much do I, would I want to see this? How much would I want to watch it on on TV? How much is this a story that needs to be told that isn't being told elsewhere, um, that hasn't already been told effectively? Um, say one of the, you know, 
that the things one of the the motto underlying motto we had on Hungry Beast was, you know, tell us something we don't know, right. uh, and tell us tell us some. And you basically, I mean, want to tell people important stories that are going to help, as I said, make the world a better place, and uh, not being derivative or repetitive of what's already there uh, is a part of a, you know my approach to stuff. Uh, <clears throat> as far as um, you know, so choosing stuff, it's just what you come across and what other people, what you develop with other people. Uh, as far as the actual pitching process goes, uh, I guess you've got to, uh, you know, at, if you're going to get a project funded, whether it's you're getting money out of Screen Australia or Screen Queensland, or you're getting uh, money out of a broadcaster, you're getting a television show commissioned, you've basically got to convince them as to why am I going to put, you know, millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars or, or whatever it is into this particular project. And so um, as far as why you've got to convince them, that that's the lens. Okay, you've got to convince them because it's basically an important story to tell and it's going to deliver an audience because that's what they want to know. The, the broadcasters might be an incredibly worthy project, hey, super worthy, but if it's only going to get 50,000 viewers, then they don't want to know about it. And the way that you you then is, I guess you pitch stuff is that you convince those broadcasters or those film funding bodies that you're going to deliver the goods. And um, I guess that's, that's what the main focus of what that pitch is. Right, so. right. Um, well, going into the, oh, we're, you know, we're in the starts of, of trimester two right now, but going into the second half of trimester two, there'll be a lot more first years going into their first TV uh, assignments and TV projects. Any advice for them as they head into it? Because you'll probably be their, their, their mentor or teacher in that situation. So what do you say to get them prepared for those roles, those TV uh, roles? Well, first of all, I'd say um, go on to the, the course website, read <laughs> yep. everything there, yeah. watch every video that's on the course website and read, watch everything there because uh, it's all there for a reason because it'll help inform you and it'll give you... Uh, a great start to be, understand what you need to do and what you're going to do. Universally, the vast majority of students never go there. But most <laughs> of them didn't come to lecture. They didn't watch the screenings. They didn't read the stuff that was online there. And so they waste time um, in class uh, where stuff has to get explained to them. And they also don't do as good a job. If you're here at film school and you want to actually do the best job you can and you want to learn the most about doing it, then I'd say read all that shit <laughs> that I took a long time to, <laughs> to you know, research and find and put on, put on the website for you. Yeah. Read all that and that, that'll be... And the other thing is turn up to class on time because there's only a tiny amount of time that we've actually got here and if we're waiting around, we waste 10 minutes of the class waiting while some people turn up late and then somebody else walks in 15 minutes late or 20 minutes late, they've missed out on a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. And it's basically, it's, if you don't turn up, it's your loss. Um, and one thing out in the TV industry, if you're going to go out and work professionally out there, like you, you turn up 10 minutes late continually to something, you're not there, you're sacked. Yeah. Basically, uh, everybody's really busy. Everybody's got limited resources in a short amount of time. And in the, the TV industry, like the thing I'd say is in, in TV land, uh, on time is 10 minutes early. So you're there yeah. waiting to go. And that's a great thing to get in the habit of while you're at film school and then take when you're out there. Uh, then you're actually going to be, um, you're going to get a lot more out of it and you're going to make a lot better p better product and you're going to learn a lot more. It's good thing yeah. you got it five minutes early so, today. So cool. There you go, first years. If you want to produce your own, you know, project in TV at the start of, or in, in the, the coming weeks and you want to have a good relationship with your tutors, actually read what you're told to read. So Specifically yeah. the reading thing. So I'm to, I think you're talking read about... Read and the, watch. A lot yeah, of those, yeah, um, those manuals and tutorials talk about these, the crazy gear you're going to walk into in the TV studio. It looks like an alien control room and you're not going to know a lot of what the, the, the different things do, but the manuals actually will help you and explain it to you. And I know I didn't do that. Oh, so yeah. I apologize, Andy. Yeah. Um, uh, I looked well, at the lighting directing board and I'm like, what the hell does that well, do? You look at the CCU, what the hell does that I, do? I'd, I'd say what I was talking about there wasn't really the manuals. Oh, okay. I was talking about all the other stuff that is about, um, I guess, 
the uh, the theory and the practice of how you actually make content and do it. So it's right. like watch all the screenings and the examples of the films. You know, watch the online lectures uh, and read the other materials that are on there. And of course, if when if you're going to be you, if you're going to end up using the TriCaster or you're going to end up using the three-play machine yeah. or the AutoCue or the sound mixer and all these other things that, that people are, will get into and they'll all have a go on, mm. then, yeah, you need to read all of that stuff and watch the training videos for that too. But more important than that is to watch all the other stuff. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. because that's about, like, learning the craft and learning the, the process of what you need to do. Yeah, right. familiarise yourself with TV because, you know, like, it's not all Netflix and Stan and stuff that, like that, you know. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, and that's right. And it's also, in the meantime, watch multicam television shows yeah. on TV, which can range from things like, uh, you know, MasterChef and The Voice are multicam TV shows. Yeah. Lego Masters and The Masked Singer are multicam TV shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gruen on the ABC is a multicam TV show. Mad as Hell is a sketch comedy, but it's shot yeah. multicam. Uh, the Weekly, uh, Hard Quiz on the ABC, a multicam TV show. The Living Room on Channel 10, Lifestyle Show, <laughs> multicam stuff. TV shows. Yeah. Watch them all. Have you been paying attention is my personal That's recommendation. Right. <laughs> I love that show, so go check that one out if you haven't yeah. already. But yeah, I think that might be all we have time for today. So thank you so much for joining us today, Andy. It's been incredibly insightful uh, to talk about your career and everything. Thanks for coming back, Mello. It's been thank good to you, have you. Thank you, Bryce. It's great to be back. <laughs> thank you so much, Andy. It's been a great chat. No worries. And thank you, dear listeners and watchers. Uh, until next time, this has been the Film School Chronicle.